This is the first in a two-part series of our review of the Smith & Wesson M&P 15 Sport 2 rifle. What we're going to be talking about today is the various features of the Sport 2 rifle as well as the different options I would recommend for the rifle. And then the second part of the series will be going through our accuracy testing uh, using various different loads out of this rifle to determine what are the most accurate loads to fire within this platform. Now, the reason why we're talking about the M&P Sport 2 right now is it is arguably one of the highest value rifles on the market today. The reason why it's of high value is because of its combination of price, quality, and simplicity. It is an excellent, excellent AR platform, both for new shooters that are getting into owning their first AR, as well as seasoned shooters that want a more simple platform based in comparison to what they're currently operating today. So looking at some of the features of the uh, Sport 2 rifle, first off is we have the standard A2 stock and grip. Again, perfectly adequate for this rifle. A lot of times people will change out the furniture on their AR rifles, but in this case, it's just not needed. These are perfectly adequate for what people are going to use the rifle for. The only exception on the pistol grip might be is if somebody had very large hands and want to have a little bit more setback from their trigger pull onto the trigger, they might want to change out the, uh, the pistol grip. But again, the reason why the military issue these is for a reason. It works and so does the stock. So again, I keep these on the rifle and do not change them out. You also have a standard uh, base plate back here. A lot of the high-end rifles will have a base plate that will usually have a QD or a sling attachment mount. This one lacks that, which is not uncommon for a, a entry level to medium grade AR-15. And we'll talk about this in a moment. A lot of people will change these out to put a sling attachment, but you don't need it. And we'll actually talk about that in a moment as well. The trigger. One of the reasons why I really like this rifle is most entry level to medium grade AR-15s have terrible stock triggers. They tend to be creepy, bad trigger pulls, bad, bad break points. Almost every AR-15 that I've owned, I've changed out the trigger because they are so poor. This rifle is the exception. I actually like the, tr the trigger on this rifle. It's a little bit spongy, but it has a nice, nice clean, crisp pull to it. And because of that, I'm not changing the trigger out in this rifle because this trigger is perfect for this rifle. Normally I use uh, Rock River Arms uh, two-stage triggers on, on almost all of my AR-15s, but this trigger, one of the reasons why I bought this rifle is I didn't need to change this out. So at a minimum, I just saved you $100 to $200 just in the trigger up upgrade alone. The difference between the Sport 2 model is they've now added the forward bolt assist as well as the dust cover, which is nice to have. A lot of people claim, hey, you don't need it. Well, maybe, but there's a reason why it's on the rifle. It adds more value to it. And in those certain situations that are very rare where you might actually need them, it's nice to have them on the rifle. You also have the MBUS backup sight system. A lot of times on the budget, low budget rifles, you're gonna have flat tops and, and flat fronts where you have to buy your sighting system. This comes stock with the rifle. And one of the things I really like about this is supposedly Smith & Wesson bore sights these uh, iron sights before they leave the factory. What makes that important is if this is your first AR-15 or you're planning on using it just for home defense, don't have time to go to the range to sight it in and what have you, what I've found with most of the MMP Sport 15 or Sport 2 rifles is that these sights are almost always on. The couple small adjustments at, at 50, 50 to 100 yards, at close range these are on and you could literally use the rifle out of the box without having to worry about initially siding it in. Smith & Wesson does that for you, which is a great feature to have. Moving forward onto the rifle are the front handguards. The front handguards are the slim profile, which I tend to prefer. Smith & Wesson uses these as well. One of the things that was interesting about this is this model lacks what are called heat shields that you would typically see in one of these rifles. So in other words, to save cost and save weight, they actually remove the heat shield so you just have the plastic surround. Now, is that a big issue? Is that going to be a problem? Well, it depends. And 98% of the time I would tell somebody, no, it won't. 
The reason why is most people who are going to own this rifle are not going to fire it that much, that consecutively, to get this to the point where this becomes really uncomfortable to hold on to. The other part of that is, since this is a carbine length, most people's hands are going to be sliding up and touching, in many cases, the front side post assembly. That's going to get very hot. It's much hotter than this is going to get, and that's going to be uncomfortable. So by the time you ever got to the point where this is going to be uncomfortable and to change this out, the reality is what I always recommend is that you get a good pair of tactical shooting gloves. If you're going to be shooting any one of these AR rifles, it just makes it a lot more comfortable. These are a pair from mechanics that I use. But again, it makes a moot point of having to change this out, whether or not it has an aluminum heat shield, it doesn't really matter. The, the fact of the matter is if you're really going to do a lot of, of shooting in that, in that capacity, you're probably going to have a forward uh, vertical mount and then you'll probably change this out anyways to a Magpul or um, any other types of BCM forward mounts that, that will take these as well as a quad rail. But again, for simplicity reason, I don't change this out. I actually like it. Moving forward to that, you have the A2 Sight Pro front. The more ARs that I shoot, the more that I own, the more I appreciate the A2 front sight post. A lot of people will claim, hey, I want the, the flat front sight post. I don't want to obscure any of my optics. Yeah, okay, but the reality is if you're going to have, unless you're going to have a dedicated high optics platform, which really this rifle isn't designed for, it's always nice to have this even as a backup capacity for your sighting system. So the bottom line is I like the A2 front sight post. Glad it's on the rifle, and obviously it's built into the gas block system. And then on the front of the rifle, you have your standard A2 birdcage, which is, again, perfectly adequate. Now we're going to get into an issue that creates some controversy for this rifle, and that has to do with the barrel. First off, the barrel is a 1 in 9 twist Armor Knight coated barrel. So Armor Knight, I believe, is the Melanite coated. They just had to rename it for Smith & Wesson. People who have fired this, this rifle and have used many different rounds, including myself, have found zero problems with any part of, of reliability with these barrels. They are simply excellent. Whatever they're doing with the coating, whether it be melanite or what have you, it's excellent. The other part of it is it lacks what's called chrome lining internally within the barrel, which again, historically has been put into combat rifles for greater reliability, but it does impede your accuracy just a slight bit. However, 98% of people wouldn't even know the difference on this rifle. The, the bottom line is I've fed everything through here, including steel case ammo. I know people who have done the same with thousands of rounds of steel case ammo, 100% reliable. Absolutely fantastic barrel, wouldn't change it. Does it lack chrome lining? Fine, who cares? Um, the final bit of controversy here is the twist of the barrel. Now, the first Sport 1 versions that came out for the Smith & Wessons had a couple different features in the Sports 2. First off, they lacked the forward bolt assist and then they lacked the dust cover, but what they gained was they had a 1 in 8 twist 5R rifling barrel that Smith & Wesson put out. A lot of people love the Sport 1 model simply because of that barrel. They claim that it's very accurate barrel, and the 1 in 8 twist is a nice compromise between the military twist versions of 1 in 7, the civilian twist versions, which are typically 1 in 9. They, they find that the, the 1 in 8 twist is perfect to stabilize all types of bullets from 50 up to 77 grain bullets. However, one of the things you're going to see is in the part two of this series is I actually went out and tried all these most popular bullets through this one and nine twist barrel. And I think people will be very surprised as the type of accuracy I got relative to the different loads that are out there. Now, would I prefer that Smith & Wesson keep the one and eight twist 5R rifling barrel in the Sport 2 version, even if I had to pay for a little bit more money for it? Absolutely. But is the one in nine twist barrel that's currently on here, the six groove barrel, is it sufficient? Yes, it's actually an excellent barrel. 98% of people wouldn't even know the difference. And when you look at the second version us in the series of these videos, you're gonna find that you're gonna be very surprised at the type of accuracy and the loads that, that receive that accuracy out of this barrel. Now, let's talk about the accessories for this rifle. Because one of the things people tend to do when they get AR-15s, they tend to over-accessorize rifles, and, and I often tell them, keep it simple. That's one of the beauty, beautiful things about the AR-15 platform is you can keep this simple. 
and it's still going to work for you in many different ways. So the first thing I want to talk about is cleaning. If you're new to shooting an AR-15, get what's called a bore snake. It's the easiest way to clean your barrel. You're going to get a cleaner lube combination. You're going to spray it down the barrel. You can disconnect the, the top upper, and then you just pull the snake through and your barrel is completely clean. Of course, you'll have to clean the other components of this by hand, but it makes cleaning the barrel very easy to do, and it also prevents you from potentially damaging the rifling in the barrel. The second thing I want to talk about is sighting systems. So three most common sighting systems people are going to use are going to either be the iron sight systems we have now, which is the MBUS is a great backup system, but it's not really designed to be a primary system. If you're going to have it in a beat up situation, these things can break. So if, if you're really married to having a good iron sight backup, I typically recommend the uh, Troy Battle Sight backups are exceptional. They're made out of steel and aluminum and just a higher quality than what you have here. But again, this will be sufficient for 98% of people that are going to use this rifle. The reason why is most people aren't going to be just firing the iron sights in this rifle. At some point, they're going to be mounting either a red dot, a hybrid, or they're going to be putting on a scope onto the rifle. And this brings me to an important point about the rifle. First off, when you have a red dot, this will allow you to co-witness through the red dot. So keeping the iron backup sights on here is important because a lot of people will always say, well, if your batteries go out, how are you going to be able to fire through your red dot? Well, the reality is you, if you can co-witness through that, you can fire through the red dot when the red dot is turned off by using the backup sight system with the red dots. The other part is you can have a hybrid uh, system like this uh, Spitfire from Vortex. This is a optics system. It's a three uh, three power optics similar to a red dot. Again, I can co-witness through it and it actually has etched glass so that if the lights go off I can still fire this through. Again, another excellent system. So for the red dots, I typically recommend the aim points in the Vortex are, are usually the highest quality you're going to put on here. Uh, for the hybrids, this is usually a, a good answer to that, to that equation without having to spend a lot of money. A very expensive system. And then you have your, your scopes. So in this case, for example, most people are going to mount a scope, give or take, that costs around $200, which is what you have here with the Nikon P223. One of the benefits of this scope, which I really like it is, it's already got bullet drop compensation onto the glass. So you know where the holdups are at various different distances when you shoot a 55 grain bullet out of a 223 rifle like this. So excellent, excellent optic. The other thing you'll notice is this is what's called a quick mount. And what I suggest when people buy optics is they buy good quality quick mounts with their optics. And there's a reason for this. First off, every time I take this scope off the rail system, I can immediately put it back on, tighten up the actual screw, and then hold zero again. So it'll go back to where I shot it before. This allows me to shoot the rifle if I have ever go out and want to have a light time with the rifle. I can simply shoot my iron sights through the rifle or I can shoot a red dot and take the red dots off with the rifle and I can shoot my scopes through the rifles. What this allows you to do is to avoid one of the biggest problems people have with the AR-15 platform which is they tend to buy their first AR-15, they put an optic system on there and then they want to shoot another optic system so they buy another AR-15 and they create dedicated platforms for each optic. You don't need to do that. One of the benefits of getting good quick detached systems, which will cost in the range of what the scope costs, is it allows you then to have modularity with your platform so that I can have, for example, a red dot that I can use and I can have a scope I can use all with one rifle. So you might in the long term end up spending more money by having good optics and quick mount platforms for your rifle, but it also allows you to only need and only use one AR-15 for your use. So again, excellent options for this, but again, remember to spend money, invest in the quick and quick release mounts. This, for example, is one I use from Wilson Combat. I know there are other ones out there as well, but you can expect to pay about the same price for the scope as you will for this mount. And then the red dots will typically run anywhere from two to six hundred dollars, depending upon what you want to spend for it. But again, it's a lot cheaper in the aggregate to have these than it is to have to buy multiple AR-15s for your usage. Now I want to get to slings because this this gets into an issue of how people want to carry the rifle. Most people carry the rifle across the front side, and what you'll commonly see a lot of tactical shooters do is they'll have attachments on their rear plate, either a QD or or, or what have you. 
Now, you don't have to go to that extent. A lot of people who shoot ARs, you'll notice they're gonna have a lot of different slings, mostly because they just don't know the right slings to use and they're always playing around relative to the rifle that they're shooting. This is a sling that I recommend for this rifle. It's affordable and it's excellent and it's from Galco. And what it is, is on the back side it has a loop and on the front side it has a latch. And what this worked perfectly for this platform is, is you can take this loop, run it through your sling attachment. So on the back here you can run it through the buttstock, feed this sling through here, And then what I can do is I can clip this to the front sling attachment and all of a sudden I have a perfectly good sling that I can tactically run on this rifle. It works exceptional. And I can take this off, I can use this on any other AR rifle because almost all of them that have these standard two type stocks will have this, this uh, sling feed right here. And then you can run this so that you can run it down across your body in the front you can make quick attachments and you can even do a single point option. So again, very good sling option from, from Galco. So if you're looking for a great sling for this without having to change up your base plate or add different things onto the rifle, again, this is a good option for you as well. The final thing I want to talk about is the rifle itself, the application for the rifle. Again, if you're a new shooter to AR-15s, a new, uh, if this is going to be the first AR-15 you're going to want to buy, it's hard to argue that there's any better value in the market. There are others out there, such as the Ruger and, uh, and Springfield make uh, rifles now that are comparable to this. They, those rifles have a 1 in 8 twist. Uh, this is the 1 in 9 twist. But Smith & Wesson has been making these for a long time. Their quality has is, is always been uh, well known within the industry. Um, so. This is an excellent rifle for the cost coming in for a new buyer. Now, if you have existing AR-15s, what I find is a lot of people tend to doctor up their AR-15s and they overdo it. And they're missing the fun of the simplicity of the platform. And one of the things I found in my own experience is I like this platform the way it stands now. Even though I change out some optics, I don't change out anything else and I really enjoy firing this rifle. Even though I have better quality ARs out there with better features on it, I still find the simplicity of this rifle to be excellent and this is one of the main reasons why I own this and I highly recommend this because this is arguably one of the highest value rifles on the market today. So make sure that you watch the second part of the video where we're going to be going out and firing a number of different bullets through the this, this Sport 2 model to determine what will uh, be the most accurate loads through this type of, uh, of rifle barrel with the 1 and 9 twist. And I think of many people who already have a preconceived notion as to what will fire the best out of this rifle will be very surprised about what they see. All right, so if you like this video, please watch the second in the series, like our channel, and thanks for watching.